knew about it. But, you know, we're, we're trying to keep the pressure on all the time, but sometimes it just doesn't work. When we were feeding cattle and we had feed to take away, you know, we could just keep taking away more. But once you quit feeding cattle, there's little to take away. We've been at this for 25 years, and I've come to some definite conclusions. I want to share three of those with you. Unless I have an unlimited amount of extremely cheap feed, I cannot afford to feed and maintain cows that weigh over 1,200 pounds. Now let's suppose, just for the sake of uh, supposing things, that I'm a really well-liked fellow in eastern Colorado. Everybody likes me. Well, quit laughing. I've got a neighbor over here to the west, and this guy has got about 10,000 acres of grass, pretty good grass. He doesn't own any cows anymore. He doesn't want cows anymore. He's fairly well off. He says, Kit, he says, I like you. I like your program. He said, I want to help you out if I can. You can use my 10,000 acres of grass for free. All you got to do is keep the fence and the water up. That's a pretty good deal. I've got another neighbor off to the east, and this guy has a John Deere tractor, John Deere baler, and loves to make hay. He doesn't have any cows. He really doesn't need the money. He gives me. He says, I like what you're doing. He says, I'm just going to, every year, if you, if you want them, he says, I'm going to bring you about 200 big bales of hay every year. I got free grass and free hay. Now, what size cow do I want? Under 1,200 pounds? Why would you say that? Okay. It doesn't really matter if your feed's expensive, cheap, or free. Same thing applies. I still want more of them. If your ranch or your farm can support 100 head of cows that weigh 1,400 pounds, it'll support 120 cows that weigh 1,100 pounds. Same inputs. Just your grass. That's 20% more cows producing 20% more calves on the same input. And I guarantee you that those smaller cows will always, 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 always produce more total pounds than the big cows. Why would I want bigger cows? One more time a big cow is good when you sell it. Only time a big cow is good is when you sell it. Fertility is not. It, fertility is my most important economic trait. You know, when we get so focused on big calves, weaning weights, whatever else, carcass quality out, whatever, milk. This is really what counts. Fertility, which is closely in my mind, followed by calf survivability. Somebody mentioned that earlier as a maternal trait. Profit always begins with a cow or a heifer that gets bred, gives birth to a calf, a live calf. And then have that calf when we wean. I don't care if we wean at six months, eight months, or ten months. She better have a calf then. If she lets me down, I fire her. <coughs> Let's say, for example, <coughs> and this has happened. But let's say Greg stopped by some May and then we're calving cows and then he said, he said, let's go look at the cows. And so I'm kind of bragging on this cow and that cow and we're driving through them kind of slow and looking and kerfunk. I just ran over a calf. And this guy's hurt bad enough. I mean, let's say I crushed his, his pelvis bone. We have to put him down. Whose fault is that? Cow, cow. Cow's fault. I'm glad you guys agree with that. <laughs> you knew what I was going to say. Most people say, well, it's your fault. No, it's not my fault. I'm not going to take the blame for anything. <laughs> Just ask my wife. <laughs> I'm going to imagine that if she'd have been standing there with that calf, we probably would have swung around him. If a coyote gets a calf, whose fault is that? Cow's fault. Cow's fault. You know, we're going to get rid of those things. Uh, you know, I think Laster may have said this, or somebody did. We're going to get rid of, we may get rid of a few good cows this way, but we're going to get rid of all the bad ones. So we, we've written some pretty hard rules for our program. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier, you know, when a cow fails our program, we may keep her and breed her, but she's for sale. 
That doesn't mean she won't work for you or somebody else, but we will not put her back in our program. We will not sell another calf out of her. Breed is not as important as biological type. And most of us seed stock producers are very loyal and committed to whatever breed we choose to, to produce and market, and we have to be. But that's not, I came into this business from a commercial background. The only reason I'm in the seed stock business is because nobody else is doing what we're doing. I said, you know, there's an opportunity. Somebody ought to be doing this. Uh, last spring was our 20th annual bull sale. I mean, we've been selling bulls for 20 years. And I still have very little competition. What I'm looking for, not necessarily breed, is a type that will survive on my ranch with no inputs. I don't care if she's red or black, registered or unregistered or whatever. I will tell you though that there's a lot of breeds out there that it takes most of my lifetime to find cattle that would work. It's hard enough with the red and black angus. Did you know that, uh, how many of you remember when the Charolais and the other exotics came into the U.S. like in the 1970s and the 80s maybe? Remember how big those cattle were? Huge. The average Angus cow today is bigger than the average Charlotte cow. Did you know that? In the United States. That's what we've done to the Angus cow. We've, we've taken something that worked and made it to where they not work. So let's talk about biological type. Again, 25 years ago, I didn't know what this cow was going to look like. It took me about 15 years before I realized and somebody said, we're going to look at the old cows. You know, after you start treating these cows tougher and tougher, Go out there and look at those old grandma cows. Even if she's not pretty, she's your best cow. Look at what her EPDs are. I guarantee you she doesn't have much milk EPD or growth EPD. She's still your best cow. She may not have the biggest calf every year, but she had the calf every year for 15, 18 years. So eventually, you know, we, we were able to pick out the right biological type, but you, you have to start uh, doing this slowly. The top of the list is easy fleshing ability. I think that's fairly obvious. You know, with the type of cattle we have now, they're bigger, they're harder keeping, they melt too much, they, they're just, they don't fit our environment. I want a cow that can put on and maintain good body condition with a limit of about a feed. Any of you can make your cows fat if you feed them enough or under stock. I'm not impressed. What impresses me is a herd of cows that can maintain good condition with no, no care. Number two, a frame score of two to four. Now, I'm probably okay with this audience, but I guarantee in most audiences, this, this scares you. You know, I've got people that they say, you know, this guy, I put up with him until now, but this is, that he's taking it too far. And they either get up and walk out, or they shut their mind. They shut the doors there. They said, I'll, I'll stay here till supper, but I'm not going to listen. Why does it bother people when I talk about a two to four frame? Because they'll have a five or six frame. <coughs> okay. They don't really know what it is. They don't know what it is. They think he's a miniature. They think he's a miniature. And I think, I think Greg's right. You know, in the back of my mind, I'm not sure I know what it is, but it reminds me, or I'm, I'm thinking about those belt buckle high cattle that were so popular 50 years ago. Remember when they got them basically miniatures? Like that? <laughs> but are you sure that's wrong? I, I'm not saying that, Greg. Don't put, now just be patient. Okay, I'll be patient. <laughs> This is what a lot of people think about. This, this bull was produced and raised up northern Missouri on the Illinois, Missouri. I don't know which side of the state line it was on, but this is almost a local bull to you, some of you guys. How many of you believe, that, don't answer this question, Greg. How many of you believe that this is where the beef industry needs to be going? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, I got a few, I got, I, you yell at them, they raise their hand. <laughs> Until I yelled at them, nobody raised their hand. I know the family that produced this bull, showed this bull. We didn't have frame scores back at that time. We measured cattle, because that was important. I mean, we, were, we, we, we knew how to measure. 
I have a pretty good idea what his frame score is. Frame score is nothing more than height in inches adjusted to age. So if you know how tall he is across the back at the hip bones and how old he is, we know what his frame score is. I think I have a pretty good idea what his frame score is. What do you think it is? Two. Two? He's an ought. He's an ought. Any other guesses? Four. Four. I got an ought, a two, and a four. We'll go with that. He's not a four frame bull. Even though that's what we thought he might be. He's not a three. He's not even a two. He's not a one. He's about six to eight inches shorter than a one frame. And I don't know if that's an odd double odd what it would be. So there's about three of you guys that shut your doors a little bit ago, and I, I want you to crack them open with me again. When I say two to four frame, that's not what I'm talking about. However, in most audiences, when people say, I'm okay with that, what are they doing? What are they what are they marketing, Greg? Beef. Grass, 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 grass fed beef. beef. They don't really care. I mean this this works very well for a grass finishing program. And you can tell that these guys are marketing a product, not a commodity. Will that guy work in the commodity system? No. No. And that's the problem with this type of animal. I mean if you're just selling beef direct to the end consumer, you're fine, but as soon as you take that one of those animals to the sale barn, you're gonna get kicked out of it. They call it shorts. <laughs> yeah, really shorts. Frame score. Height in inches adjusted to age. How tall in inches is a four frame cow? Fifty inches. Fifty inches. Who said that? You've been studying this, haven't you? <laughs> He's absolutely right. Fifty inches is on me is right here. Now I'm putting my hand here so you can say, yeah, you know, that's not a huge cow, but that's not a dwarf. Now somebody usually says, well, he's not very big. <laughs> Did they ever call you short? <laughs> yeah, I've been called short. We have some four frame cows that weigh 1,200 pounds. We've had a few that weigh 1,300 pounds. I saw one in Canada that weighed over 1,400 pounds. Now why would they be bigger up there than they are down here? Mother Nature. The deer in Missouri are not as big as my deer. My deer are not as big as the deer in Montana. So when you guys in, in Missouri have big cows, you're really going against nature. We can make them thicker in a more dry, cooler environment. Uh, for example, what we want to do in a cold environment like Alberta, Canada, we want to maintain body heat. <coughs> So we want a small surface area and a big mass. If you are in Louisiana, for example, you want just the opposite. You want lots of surface area and not much mass, so you can get rid of body heat. Mother Nature will take care of that for you. Okay, a quick lesson here, and there will be a test. So either take mental notes or write this down. There are two inches of difference between frame scores. So a four frame cow is 50 inches tall, a three frame cow is 48, a five frame cow is 46, Greg says 46, a five frame is what? 52. 52, thank you. There's four inches of difference between a cow and a bull of the same uh, frame score. So a four frame cow is 50 inches, a four frame bull is? 54. 54. A three frame bull is? 50. No, there's still two inches between frame scores. Oh, 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 52. 52 is a little tricky and hard to catch on to. So a four frame bull is 54, a three frame bull is 53, a five frame bull is 56. With me? Keep that in mind. We have some thick, easy flesh and four frame bulls that weigh well over a ton. This is our Red Angus Colorado Hobo Bull, four and a half frame. He's crowding 2,400 pounds right there. Not that small a bull, is it? 
I'm going to take it down a notch. Here's a three and a half frame bull, black Angus bull called Idaho. All the bulls I'm showing you, we were using up to 9, 10, 11 years of age. Uh, good long last.